it's Marla Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid and today I'm having a chat with Rachel Thompson. Yay! Hey Rachel! Hey! Hi everybody! <laughs> hey, so Rachel is the author of a new re newly released book called Broken Places and the award-winning Broken Pieces as well as two additional humor books, A Walk in the Snark and Man Code Exposed, which I've read is super funny. Um, she owns Bad Redhead Media, creating effective social media and book marketing campaigns for authors. And I love, we're both redheads! And we both like Nutella, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rachel is uh she's so amazing she does a lot of things like me but we're gonna do a couple of videos and this one i want to talk about having our own business because in rachel's own words i love what she put on her website she says here's my deal after 17 plus years in soul sucking big pharma sales marketing and training now recovered thank you i started my blog rachel in the oc back Wow, in 08, mostly because like you, I had something to say. I embraced blogging, social media, like a dog to a bone, blogger, Facebook, Twitter, all that. So just tell us a little bit about that because I am such an advocate for women. Um, you know, I started my own business when I was in my late 40s, mid 40s, late 40s, and never thought I could start my own business. I was in, I hated being an employee. I hated having to ask hey, can I come in a little late because I have a mammogram on Thursday or, you know, not being able to go to a church service at night if I wanted or go to a workshop or a book signing, you know, just having to show up and somebody else pulling my strings and I finally got out of that. But a lot of women are scared and don't know what to do. So give us your a few tips and insights on, on you know, what women can do. Well, I was in the same boat and and – Pharma was just really difficult for me, and being a creative person like you are and being in a corporate environment was just, as I said, soul-sucking. So um, I had already had my daughter and gone through some, because of the events that had happened earlier in my life with um, childhood sexual abuse and really not getting help for that and not realizing that a lot of what had happened was affecting me as a woman, especially after I had my daughter. I went into postpartum depression and had anxiety and and so being away from her was affecting me severely and I didn't really understand or put those things together until after I had her and had to go back to work and I was so incredibly miserable that I finally just had a talk with my husband and said you know what I just I can't do this anymore and he said okay you know what I'll just work harder I could use your help he had his own business and he's a terrible speller so it's kind of funny that here I am with, you know I'm not an editor but you know I can spell um, so I ended up doing work with him and finding that I was really enjoying that part of the writing and editing aspect. He wrote programs for sales training, which was, you know, horribly boring. Mm -hmm. But at least I got to do a little bit of what I loved and I got to be home with her and we were trying to have another baby. So it was a good time for me to kind of just be home and spend time with my family and just kind of regroup and find what I really wanted to do without realizing that I was finding what I really wanted to do. It wasn't a conscious effort. Okay. Um, and then eventually I, I found blogging. It was becoming very popular at that point in time, and, and I really just did not really want to be on Facebook. Everybody was getting on Facebook, and ugh, I just didn't want to have anything to do with it. So I really just went into blogging and found that I loved it. And lo and behold, I had followers who... You, what you've I'm done saying. fantastic. You have such a successful blog, and I just, I never did. I didn't. I don't think I put enough into it, but I was never able to get any fault. You know, barely any followers. On the I blog. think it depends. You know, I think my marketing background really helped me understand branding, and and under, I'm doing actually I'm doing a webinar tonight about blogging basics, and you really have to look at your branding and understanding what the message is that you're putting out there and then being consistent with it. And that is the most difficult aspect for most people. And then embracing how to get that message out and connecting with people. It's not about, here's my book, go buy my book, mm -hmm. me, me, me. It's about 
topics that interest you and fascinate you and then connecting with those people who are interested and fascinated in the same topics exactly. and really that's what it's about exactly and I think that's how to transition into your own business as well as finding what topics fascinate you yes and what would you do for free uh, what do you sp spend most of your time doing when you're not working yeah. And then trying to see how you can get paid to do it. And I always say to, to people now, save as much as m much money as you can right now. If you have to cut down on things, put some money aside so that maybe they could do what you did and say and regroup or yes. cut down on the day job. And well, well, and that's what I was starting to say. And that's what I found is I eventually found in order to get my blog out there, I had to embrace social media. Mm -hmm. And it is a form of marketing, which was my background. And so it ended up becoming very easy for me to understand. Some people don't understand it. For me, I really do. Now, if you ask me to do geometry, forget about it, right? So I found that as an author, once I started writing my books, it all came together very easily for me. And I'm able to really explain it well because of my training background. So the, all those different components, what I hated about my previous job, uh -huh. I'm able to utilize now in, for myself in my own business. So really take a look at what you're really good at, even though you might have not enjoyed it in your previous job, uh -huh. and how you can utilize that in, your, in starting your own business. And that's really w how I ended up having my business. And now I'm so busy, I sometimes I have to turn away projects, which oh. is shocking. I never thought I would have to turn away business. That's amazing. Yeah, even or even something that you tried and, and you didn't, like I um, was an actress also for like 20 years. I never made a full living at it, but I did <laughs> commercials. I did modeling things here and there, but I was always studying, always up in front of people in classes, always doing something. And that... Uh, helped me uh, now with what I'm doing now. So um, yeah. Uh, so I'm t putting the do not disturb on my Skype. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So so all of that uh, training, getting in front of people and everything, now works because I need people skills to to work with all these personalities in my matchmaking to do what I'm doing now and uh, marketing my books. So I, I don't think anything's wasted, and I don't think we should look back and say, oh, I wasted all those years in a job I hated. Take what you, uh, all the experiences that you had and, and pump it right into the next project and let it propel you. Yeah, I agree. And I think you have to, everything happens for a reason. So the, I needed to spend those 17 soul-sucking years, and I needed to go through that depression to bring me to the point where I am now so that I can help other people. And I, I give out a ton of free tips on my blog, on my Facebook, um, at Bad Redhead Media, everywhere, Google+, Pinterest, you know, wherever people are, you'll find me. And you don't have to pay for my services. If you can, great, I customize them to you. But if you can't, that's fine. I mean, I'm happy to share all that information. Sign up for my newsletter. You'll get tons of great tips. And you won't have to spend any money. And if you do want to, then, you know, let's talk about it. Exactly. And that's awesome because I the, we were on Facebook the other day and we had that that uh, comment uh, commentary going with someone. And, and uh, you had talked yeah. about people wanting services for free and, and uh, how, you know, we do. When, once we have our own business and we've got a family and everything, we have to make our priorities. And, and uh, that was kind of funny because people, I totally you know, felt the pain there because I'll get people email me and say, oh, hey, let's meet for coffee and I'd love to pick your brain for a couple hours on how to get published. Or a woman emailed me and said, would you like to help me start my business uh, as a matchmaker up in Canada? And I'm like, why would I do that if you want to pay me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get me. that a lot. Yeah. And, and, you know, the way to, I think the way to balance it is, and that, I was very conscious of that too, is to give back. And that's why I do give back but through my blog, I have my own author blog where I feature a lot of other writers, but I have my business blog as well. So I'm running two blogs weekly. Um, and, and that way I can give out free advice and I give very practical tips. Go here, do this, mm -hmm. step one, step two, instead of just sort of pie in the sky kind of theoretical types of things. So it's very practical. And if people follow the advice that I give, They'll figure out ways to, you know, utilize Twitter better or get more likes on their Facebook page or 
you know, whatever the specific art things are that they're trying to get done. And honestly, a lot of this stuff people can Google, but they won't get the personal experience where I can say, I tried this. Sorry, that's my Skype. I need to <laughs> shut, it, right? shut it down. Um, where I can say, I tried this. I spent 50 bucks and it totally sucked. Don't do it. Or maybe right. I did it. I did it wrong. Here's what I learned, and here's how to do it right. Yeah. So I save you fifty dollars. That kind of thing. Yeah, and I think it's great to have somebody have a coach or something. Um, if somebody wants to start their own business, I mean, even you. So, so tell us all of the services that you do provide. If somebody wants to come, come to you. Sure. I do three things. I do social media. I do marketing, and I do branding. So social media can run the gamut from me training you or whoever, but I'll use you as the example. Okay. Uh, people will come to me and say, okay, my book's been out and it's not selling and I don't know why. And I'll say, okay, what kind of social media do you have? And they say, huh? <laughs> so then I know that I'm starting at, you know, ground zero. Um, so I can either do it all for them. Uh, I have clients who have never done a tweet in their whole life and they've been with me for two years because they don't care and they don't want to. So I do everything for them. So you tweet out, you may, you tweet for them too? Oh. Mm -hmm. But I tweet as them, but I've gone through um, a, a checklist of what are their keywords, what um, I, qu I use quotes from their blogs and their um, right. books and, and it's in their voice and a lot of times I ask them to approve everything before it goes out so that it absolutely sounds like them. So in a sense I'm ghostwriting okay. for them. Um, but if it's outside of my range, I have, I'm have i working with a neurosurgeon right now, clearly I'm not a neurosurgeon. So any kind of responses have to go through him. I mean there's absolutely no way I could respond of course, of course. <laughs> as him. So um, those types of things, you know, there's a lot of interaction and that's why I say it's totally customized. Then there's um, other services where I can um, just schedule things for people or I can just grow their Twitter or I can just get likes for them on Facebook. I don't do anything, um, everything's organic. I don't go to Fiverr and buy 10,000 fake followers because, I mean, what's the point? Fakes don't buy books, right? Right, right. Um, or, or purchase services from people. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I do all of that with social media, primarily focusing on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus because it is owned by Google. Mm -hmm. People kind of just say, oh, it's unimportant, but it is owned by Google, and it shows up first mm -hmm. in a Google search. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then Pinterest, which mm -hmm. is the most popular and fastest growing social channel right now. Well, so I was those wondering as an author or whatever for what my YouTube channel and stuff if I should use Pinterest. So Pinterest, because I have a Pinterest account and then I don't really use it too much because I have no time, but it is so colorful and fun to look at those posts and pictures. Uh, and you put, so you put a picture and then it has the link to whatever you put the, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and you need to optimize every post that you put up. There's a little editing section, and you can put your links as long as it's your um, information. Okay. You can't take somebody else's and put your link on it. Interesting. Now, YouTube is great. It's owned by Google. Mm -hmm. So, again, super important. Now, that's awesome for you. Um, so that's going to help your SEO as well. So anything that's owned by Google or is, or is indexed by Google mm -hmm. is really important. Um, this is a great tip. And Twitter is now indexed by Google. Uh, so you have, <laughs> excuse me, you have Twitter, Google Plus, and YouTube all indexed by Google. Awesome. Those awesome. are your top three. Everybody's on Facebook, right? Yeah. All the time. They do not index anything. Google doesn't. So, but from a relationship building standpoint, which is my number one mantra, build relationships first, it is crucial. Mm -hmm. But from an SEO perspective, it means absolutely nothing. And it's harder for to get everybody to see your posts now. It seems like it's it doesn't reach very many people unless you pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to boost and boost them and stuff. Which you know I can understand. Facebook is a business <laughs> for somebody. Well, else. the other thing with Facebook, and I write about this on my blog, is if you have a personal account, which you're required to, if you know if you want to have a page, well, you're not required, but you need to. Um, you cannot promote your business or book or any kind of service or product on your personal account. They are shutting down accounts that are doing that. And it's in what we all sign. It's right there in the legal guidelines. Interesting. So you see authors all the time promoting their books on their personal account 
and they're shutting down those accounts. It's happened to two clients and about three friends. And they just suspend it or shut it down. They, no warning, nothing. It's just gone. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we're, let's do a video about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much for being with us and giving us these great tips. And everybody, you know, it, I know it seems daunting if you want to start your own business and get out of the rat race, but having somebody to help you if you need any help understanding, you know, the, the media stuff or, or the how to tweet out your stuff, contact Rachel. Um, everything's Google, Google, Googleable. That's hard word to <laughs> <Google> say. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we're, all, we're here to help. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.